Hey everybody, it's Mark from the Crystal Chronicles, your Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia podcast. We come to you live on Twitch and YouTube every Thursday night, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, bringing you all your defo news and talk. Well, here is my tier list for the upcoming FRs for August and the July 2022. We should have had the Squex community stream, Barring no surprises, these are the six upcoming FR weapons. We do get a couple BT pluses in there as well. Obviously, there are other characters who are going to get C90 and uh, force enhancements. Take those into uh, consideration as you're pulling, as you're thinking. Come into our Discord. If you have any questions about those characters, I have decided moving forward right now for this era to focus just on the FR characters uh, and rate those FRs as I see their uh, usefulness. Uh, so if you like this video, give it a like, uh, subscribe, consider becoming a member for 99 cents. Uh, I will also share for members only my poll plans for this coming month. Uh, so you can check that out and some other fun stuff as well, uh, including some private channels on our discord. So uh, let's get to it. Uh, we just go through the tiers, C, B, A, and S. There's really no uh, there's really no plan. Hey, you should spend this much. You should spend that much because in the FR area, things are a little bit different. Some characters have BTs and you want those BTs. Some characters don't. Uh, you might mix tickets and gems in this era. It, it really all depends on what you have and what's going for you. Just as a reminder, here were my suggestions for last month. Braska and Desh in the C tier. <laughs> if, if I had could make more tiers, uh, Braska would be higher than Desh, but uh, just to kind of make things easier. Kryle was in the B tier, Tidus in the A tier, and Kane and Camelot in the S tier. Kane, not really for his FR, but for the character as a whole. Uh, and then obviously Camelot, exceptionally broken. So uh, let's dig into this coming month, starting with the C tier, lowest tier characters. Again, I think you're pretty easy to skip. The first one is Gabranth, who gets a BT and an FR. Gabranth, if you're not familiar, is a melee attacker with debuffs. He's got delays. He inflicts break, the inflict break status. Uh, he does have some defensive uh, abilities that prevent damage to the party. Uh, and some defensive support. His new burst effect upgrades his special debuff, uh, providing further support to the party and a further impact on the enemies. His force time damage increases when a party member inflicts break or attacks a debuff target. So when the you get these force time damage bonuses, it's always gonna be better to have force weapons where it's easy to get one or more of the conditions. That's why Camelot, if you set him up correctly, is so broken because you can get multiple conditions multiple times throughout one turn, uh, increasing that damage. Uh, for Gabranth, you're gonna need a really specialized team to make, take advantage of the constant inflict, but it is possible. So if you really like Gabranth, if you really like break, unbreak, uh, inflicting break status, there are gonna be some characters that really do take advantage of breaking and unbreaking. I'm not sure at this point we have all of them at C90, and so it might be down the road uh, to really take advantage of that. But I think right now uh, you're going to be safe to skip because it's going to be hard, I think, um, to... And somebody's going to prove me wrong, and that's okay. But I think you're going to have to spend a lot of time to, to really get the most use out of Gabron. Obviously, attacking a debuff target fairly easily, but being able to inflict every single turn, uh, it might be a little bit more difficult. Uh, the second character is Ursula, who comes back with her FR weapon. Ursula is a melee damage dealer who has a couple interesting mechanics in terms of turn manipulation, warps, battery, and she does give the party brave floor. So 20% of your max brave, you can never go below that, which is always a cool effect. Her force time damage increases when characters, when the character whose turn it is, brave is at least 20%, or it increases more when it's 100% of their max brave. So when their current brave is 20% of their max brave or 100% of their max brave, uh, at the start of their turn, they increase. And so I don't think there's going to be huge multipliers for this because it's just once a turn and uh, you're going to need to take advantage of that 100% max brave. So that might take a, a lot of crafty players. Again, it's possible, but I think you're going to be safe to skip this one. Uh, and then finally in C tier is Fujin. Fujin comes back with FR weapon as well. Fujin is a wind enchant in peril character with support, battery, and launches. Unfortunately for Fujin, her 
Force time damage increases when a party member selects a wind ability. Not terrible, but you got to build around that. And unfortunately, when Fujin initiates a launch, which she cannot do every turn, um, so uh, really, really not. It, it's too. It's it just very, very difficult to uh, increase that uh, force damage with Fujin, uh, which makes her uh, most definitely the worst character this month. And uh, if you want to come on uh, and uh, join our sub campaign. A character that I'm going to fully invest in if we get 100 subs memberships uh, by the time Fujin releases. So I think we're already halfway there or close to halfway there. So you can come on our live shows and help uh, with that. Uh, let's get into the next tier. So that's the C tier characters. I think, yeah, you're, you're pretty good to skip. Cabranth, uh, Ursula, and Fujin. Uh, B tier characters that are worth considering, starting with Sherlotta BTFR. Sherlotta is a support character with Brave Retain, <clears throat> healing, battery, gravity attacks, and pretty decent damage in, in a burst window. Uh, her burst effect, which is new for her, gives HP damage up, Brave Regen, and Brave Gain, so you can build around that. Makes her a really interesting and versatile character. Uh, her force damage increases when a party member uses a transformed Brave or HP attack, or when Sherlotta recovers Brave to the party. Uh, so again, uh, that using a transform Brave or HP attack, uh, which Sherlotta can do, obviously, but a lot of characters can do. It's not the hardest thing to hit. Uh, obviously, the off turns aren't going to tick it off or anything, so that kind of sucks. Um, and, and again, in, in Force Era, if you can get any conditions where off turn damage can tick up, that's going to be even better. Uh, but this is on turn. You have to use either a Transform Brave or HP, so you're building around that. Or when Sherlotta recovers Brave, uh, again, so that's tied to her turn. So I really don't think her Force... Uh, weapon is particularly good. I think her as a character, she's probably uh, pretty good. Maybe one of the best pickups this month, especially if you're looking for uh, somebody to help charge the gauge or just a good, solid support. She's always been very good. Uh, but a as an FR character, I think uh, she's she's okay. Something to consider, but not, not great. Reno uh, comes with his FR. Reno is a thunder damage dealing debuffer. He's got dispels, delays, and damage mitigation, mostly through his pyramid special debuff. His force damage increases when a party member uses a thunder ability or when an enemy ends a turn or he's got three, so does Cloud of Darkness coming up, or when an enemy uses a melee or ranged attack, which is kind of an interesting um, mechanic, so you have to kind of pay attention to that. So... Um, I hope I hope that's not in some rework. I hope that's 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 the current the current state of it. If it is, I apologize. Uh, but obviously, um, the thunder enhance is fine. Uh, yeah, the thunder attack damage up is fine. Um, but then you're you're obviously supposed to give enemies turns, uh, and so you really need to build a team around him that can both do thunder damage and also give the enemies turns uh, and then using this third thing to make sure that you have enemies who are doing melee or ranged attacks but if they're pyramided if they're um, you know if they're not attacking if they're paralyzed etc they're not going to attack at all um, so it, it's not really great but I I feel like there's some potential there so that's kind of why I put Reno in B tier uh, e even though with these other two ladies he's not um you know, he's really not on, on par, but I feel like there's some interesting potential with, with Reno moving forward. And he's a great, I mean, he's just a good uh, damage mitigation, good LD call as well. Uh, so, but that's why he's in B tier. Just something to think about uh, and kind of, for me, uh, kind of a character that I'm, I'm interested in. I want to think more about how I might use him in the future. Uh, also a character I like generally from his games. Uh, the final character of the month we're getting is Cloud of Darkness, who already has her BT+, Plus, but comes back with a FR weapon. Cloud of Darkness is a magic damage dealer with delays and follow-up attacks with her BT effect. Her force time damage increases when a party member uses a magic attack or delays the target with or without a break. That's important to know. So if you delay via break, it counts. If you delay without a break, it also counts uh, some different damage up for each of those different things. So uh, both of those, I think, really easy to hit. Uh, there's all kinds of characters that delay. So if you build around that, obviously she delays as well uh, with multiple buttons. So that's really good. So I think she's, her and Charlotta are, are, I think, probably far and away the best two characters this month. Uh, but I also think that compared to Compared to the other characters we got last month, compared to Titus, I don't think they're on the same page as Titus. They're definitely not on the same page as Cam or Kane, uh, and so that's why I put them 
in this B tier, which means, friends, there's no A or S tier this month um, unless we got a surprise. And if we get a surprise, if we get a time traveler, if we get a, a GL first FR, um, I, I couldn't even tell you because it would be all speculation. But my general rule is GL firsts are worth pulling for. And so pick them up if that's the case. Uh, if not, I think this is a good month to save. We get boards. Maybe you got Camelot. Maybe you got Kane. Maybe you've pulled several. I think I pulled, I've pulled every FR except Dash. Uh, so, you know, uh, I'm not afraid to cut back a little bit this month and then move into next month. There are going to be some good characters coming up here in the future. And then a few months in, into that, there's going to be a lot of characters that are really cool. So I really do think this is a good month to just kind of step back, uh, let off the gas a little bit. Maybe if some of these characters are interesting to you, pick them up. But I don't think any of them are must-haves. Uh, I don't think any of them will, will make, make or break the game. But uh, obviously, use your resources as you see fit. Let me know in the comments below who you are planning to pull on. Uh, and I will share my pull plans later in another video. As always, thank you all. Good luck on your polls. And join us Thursday night, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time on Twitch and on YouTube live for the Crystal Chronicles podcast, your Decidia Final Fantasy podcast for all your Defo news and talk. Goodbye, friends.